wedgie is so bad, I feel like I could step on stage in a thong. Here you go. Okay, this is what I wanted to. I wanted to run past. You will have. The, to, um, you will have to do that at some point. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, no, none of you have coming. I'm not telling anyone. No, come on. I appreciate. I'm. I'm a fan of the sport. You've got to invite me. I'm scared. Tripods. Are you ready? Tripod chat. Tripod chat. It says. Iron Gym is a training facility, not a photo shoot establishment. If you're trying to take a picture or a video, please be mindful of your fellow members. Fair enough. Very, very fair. They shouldn't have to walk around your cameras, tripods, especially during peak times. Please keep in mind, tripods are not allowed during busy hours. Uh, I think banning them during busy hours is a bit of a, a tricky one. I think oh, just ban, just, just straight ban, straight ban. Here's the, oh, here's oh, the yeah. last bit. In like addition, professional photo shoots require permission from the management, no yeah. exceptions. Yeah, no, I think that's fair. I think if you're going to have a photo shoot, then yeah, fair enough. But tripods, yeah, but, I, I'm all for tripods. As long as you don't get in people's way and you're not a cock about it. Uh, I don't know. I think it gets distracting when people are toing and froing from their tripod for uh, like endless amount of time and ruining their workout in the process. But again, this is their workout, their yeah, problem. Yeah, no, I know, but it, gets, it just gets very distracting. And also... And a lot of people are actually content creators, so part of their job is to film the content of their work. But then sometimes sometimes I know I'm in the background of someone's tripod video, and it's kind of making me feel like... Sub- it's making me think about it, and I shouldn't have to think about someone else filming themselves. Well, I think it's more of a... Get Free publicity. There you go. <laughs> yeah. It's more about... It's, it's more the thing of if you have a problem being someone's video, not being able to... Not being afraid to say, or being able to say... I'd rather not be in the video. And all they have to do is just change the camera angle. It's not that hard for them to just no, out the drone. No, true. But then most people aren't or confrontational. Could, yeah, or if they were able to just be like, do you mind if you're in the background of my footage? And you'd be like, mm, I'd rather not to. And I said, okay, just move the angle, 180 degrees film from the other side. Maybe if you're a, a, tri- <laughs> a tripoder, then just be conscious of people around you. I think you. that's what it is. I think it's just be conscious of people. Yeah. And mm. essentially, if you can see you have options of there are loads of people that direction not many people that direction probably better to film in the direction of less people yeah um because like i said some people don't want to be in the camera and that's very fair enough they've they have every right not to be in the camera mm. honest, quite frankly i sometimes look like melted ice cream and i don't want the internet to see that it's horrendous i think from like an operator point of view i don't like to ban anything until it becomes a problem and yeah, I, no, I find yeah, a way yeah. around it generally and if i can't find a way around it then i do find it really funny how strength asylum banned tripods when they literally got famous due to eddie hall filming in their gym <laughs> it's literally it's crazy it's crazy guys oh, that's a that's a rookie era anyway how are you two lovely lads i'm warm i mean it is a toasty time of year but i'm okay how are you? How are I'm alright, yeah. <laughs> driven back from Manchester today after doing some work with my fried chicken family. Yeah, well, you shared one of the <laughs> reels. I like, look good, man. Yeah. I'll go to Manchester for a week. I, did, I did I did. invite you to come for food when you were there last time. No, you said you were there on the weekend. I left on the Thursday. No, I said you were welcome to go there and I'd sort you out. Where is it? It's in the Northern Quarter. What's that? probably the, the, the trendy Manchester. the trendy part of manchester it's all pretty trendy i don't know where i'm staying I'm, uh, I'm there for two nights i'll let you know i don't know where i'm staying either i'm right by the hotel i think airbnb is, this time Fine. yeah i think i'm staying on all these but anyway shout out yard and coop they are my people remind um, me of that name because i will probably go there on okay. wednesday night or thursday all right we'll figure it out but i will if you give us some promo then i'll hook you up Instagram story fried chicken with my friends <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fried chicken with my fried chicken friends yeah it's all good that's what it's all about that's how marketing works these days it literally is um, I was at a rugby match today oh yeah I saw that yeah, yeah I was watching two of my clients under 16 cool. London Irish lads how they do yeah, I think they won because it got to a point where I stopped I, think they won. I stopped paying attention to the game and I was talking more to the parents of the players to kind of get a bit of a what's going on at home understanding because obviously the boys what's come into going the gym. On at home? Are they all right? Are you? Yeah. Are you, are you, are you, are you, are like, you good to your children? I'm conscientious of the fact that like, are they fussy with their food? Are they eating enough food at home? Is yeah. there anything I can do? Um, but the boys played well. It was one of those ones where they're like rolling subs because they're yeah, trying yeah. to establish who makes the academy and stuff. So oh, fingers yeah. crossed um, they got in. I'll find out soon. Very good. Very good. Go on, say it. What? What's today's topic, Chris? <laughs> you know, we're getting, we'll get on to that. I'm, we're cool. just having a little catch up. What's first. the next preamble? I'm ready. Um, oh, random thing that I heard the other day that I'd never even thought about that you've probably never even thought about. Are you ready for this? Yeah, yeah, go on. You know when you buy a whole chicken in the supermarket? Yeah. And you see it presented in the package? Yeah. Have you ever considered that it's lying on its back? No, I haven't actually. Oh, that's kind of it. <laughs> <laughs> because the chicken breast is at the top and therefore... Yeah, he's not wrong. You always assume it's... You just, like, you just assume it's like, like this. Yeah. But it's yeah. not actually on its back. It just blew my mind. I know it's a random fact, 
but it just brings like, in which case the chickens got absolutely that. juiced pecs. Yeah, of course they do. Wow. Honestly, what well, they bench probably quite a lot. They probably they've like, got little arms. <laughs> you know I, mean? I reckon <laughs> sure, if they're they're able to. their range would be so small that they'd be benching. Really some crap serious. overhead though. I reckon, yeah, horrendous. Honestly, yeah, there's no leverage. Honestly, bad bad posture too. T Rex, yeah, do you reckon a T Rex have a good bench because it's got small arms? Yeah. Bad what? deadlift though. Bad, horrendous deadlift. Yeah, no, no leverage. <laughs> so I don't think they've reached the bar. Let's do every dive. No. What an- <laughs> animals? Uh, what exercises animals would suit? Gorilla deadlift. Gorillas would see oh, everything. everything. Batter anything. I know, but I just thought because they basically walk around their hands. I feel like on gira- the floor. giraffes would be terrible at overhead press because they've just got so far to get. <laughs> above I, feel their like, head. I feel like giraffes would be pretty terrible at everything, which is really unfortunate leverages. Very like, but, but you know what they are good at? Smacking each other with the heads. You've seen the videos? Yeah, that like, is, what, I used to watch that on like Planet Earth. You'd like just 1 a.m. just sit there just yeah. with a sandwich, like mm, Google yeah. compilation just of giraffes and whack each other, smacking each other. Oh, uh, before we get started, I've got a little. I've got. A, I brought a little bonus drink for you to try. Go on, how oh, fucking. Because you two love uh, energy drinks, right? I've been known to have. You one. have. A, you have like three a day, oh, don't I you? I do at the moment. I have I about have one a year. Addiction. Do you not have them? No, I, I, I don't drink, drink them caffeine. Often. I have one. In fact, I'll drink that whole well, thing this, now. In that case, then this is a present for Mike. Go on, is it? It, so I I like to order stuff from America like oh foods no. and stuff. I'm already oh. I'm already excited I'm by nervous. the label and the oh, colours of the can because that, that means it's like like uh, animals. The more colourful it is, the more dangerous because, it is. Um, <laughs> in in America, Monster Energy Drinks is a much bigger brand than oh, it is here. Oh, they've got flavours. Oh, okay. And yeah. they've got flavours you can only dream of. Oh, if you so, say it's mushroom flavour. Oh my God, I can already see from the can that I've not seen that before. I'm so What flavour is it? What I have got for you is a salted caramel Java coffee yeah, that monster sounds drink. sounds horrendous. I'm going to drink this now. And that is a present for, for the team, but more specifically Michael. Oh, thank you so much for this. I don't know what to say, really. How many um, milligrams of caffeine does really it? We'd like to thank my mum. <laughs> I'm going to have a look. Yeah. Where, where we are. So I, I I might get I might get a different one each time I do an order just just as a little treat. Do you, is there anything you want that would that would make you do you like do you like sweets American sweets yeah. and stuff? Oh I, I, I like sweets. I like still your standard things. 160, so still safe, safe for consumption right now. There you go, crack in, and for, I'll have a little splash actually if you get a glass yeah, going. Yeah. I wouldn't mind a try. Um, but yeah, so today's show before we launch into it has been a long time coming. I'm just really curious to see the colour of it as well. It's good. I bet you it just looks like coffee. Ugh, disgusting. I'll do the Who right doesn't thing. fully do the, the 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 flicky lid thing? Well, because he, you didn't like the fact that he didn't put the he ring left. He left it erect. He left it erect. Yeah, it's just that, like coffee. That looks horrendous. No, it just looks like coffee. Oh, you like coffee. coffee? You you're one of those coffee flavoured likers. Yeah, I'm drink. not gonna lie. That is basically just like a a sweet Starbucks affair. Yes. Yes. Mm, correct. Uh, no. No further notes, Yana. <laughs> it's actually, I could tell. I would actually happily sit and drink all of this. I bet it'd be right quite now. nice if it was like really cold. Probably. I think you're probably right. Yeah. How is it? Nice. You enjoying mm. that? There you go. Little mm. little treat. Yeah, yeah. Sponsor Sponsor me, monster. Disgusting. Help fuel my addiction. I'm gonna find you something more more outlandish for the next one because I feel I played safe for that. Yeah, one. yeah, no, I will happily drink anything you put in front of me. Well, that's an energy drink. That sounds like a challenge <laughs> to me. <laughs> I had an energy drink at the end because now I'm afraid. I don't know. I can produce some serious energy if you need me to. Uh, oh. Consistent. So I've been back at school. I was. School. I was in the gym the other day, which is a common common thing. It's How common, most of our stories start? Isn't it's it? a common. It's a common theme for the show. And there was a guy in the gym who was pushing so hard that the noises he was making, mm-hmm. he literally sounded like the bad guy from the original Men in Black film. Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean by I th- that? Yeah. He's like... That sounds like me every time I go to the toilet. Like, honestly, every rep was like like gurning. And like 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 <laughs> it was actually just Chris. He was He's some of like those cats when they get really afraid. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know we that. had the power cut last night in the gym. And because oh, you could hear everyone me. training, it was such a weird 20 minutes until we got some music back on. You could just hear all of that, basically. I just hate, all the was chorus. It really, was it really dark? Silent yeah. gyms are a very scary place. It was like a haunted damned souls of the damned kind of situation kind not of cool not to mention there is no safe area to to break wind if it's silent. 100% not 100% not it's just ugh. it needs safety like a Beyblade let it rip <laughs> right um, okay so um, we're here uh, I think we've covered all the usual nonsensical chatter you still need to do the thumbnail from the last video 
Yes, I do. I've been a busy boy. Let's check it. Let's remind you. You haven't uploaded it yet, have you? It's waiting. It's waiting. Right, okay. It's, I will... it's, pre- it's up ready to publish. Well, therefore, I can do two thumbnails, can't I? I can do this show and the previous show. Yes. Um, I haven't even checked the listens on the last episode. I'm sure it's tremendous. It um, bloody better be. Yeah. Well, thanks, gang, if, you, if oh. you've come this far. Are we recording? Yeah, I'm just checking me out. Okay. We're let's all go. very much recording right now. But um, yeah, so shall we just shall we just start the show and say what the topic is when we start the show? Yes. All let's right. do it. Let's just do that instead then, shall we? Yes, I know. This is this is also a trending TikTok sound at the moment. Okay, so I felt like we needed a bit of serious background music to intro this one. Do you ever play Pokemon where you go into like the haunted mansion where you see <laughs> the ghastlies and that, <laughs> the haunters? And off the cliff. You know the one I mean. <laughs> this is completely trashing my intro. You know what I mean, though, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, where you go into the, the ghost mansion? That's the vibe. Yeah, I'm yeah, thinking of Mario now with the ghost mansion. Oh uh, yeah, no, I'm mm. no, I'd be like a bit of Pokemon. Yeah. Can That's, I can, can yeah. I go back? Yes, do it again. Anyway, as we were t- as I was saying, <laughs> I can see he's ready to derail it again. He's thinking, what else could I say right now? I'm going to stay away from the mic. I yeah. feel like okay. So this show's been a long time oh, coming. Yeah. Okay, this is episode 14. Welcome everyone. I'm Christy Fellows. He's Michael Carter. Harry Moore. We're we all should here. Should have done episode 13. Unlucky number. Oh. Well, let's pretend it is. Anyway, so this is a show that has been brewing for a long time. Because we're going to go deep. We're going to go to the upside down right now. And we're going to talk about drugs. I love Stranger Things. Yeah, I do as well, to be fair. It's incredible. It's so good, actually, yeah. Um, yeah, this is some Demogorgon music from oh, Stranger Things. I've watched, I'm rewatching it for the fifth time. Or something. Demodogs. But yeah, so today's episode, in, it, in its entirety, is about drugs. Performance-enhancing drugs. And our opinions... And predominantly our opinions but also some facts can we say facts some yeah some facts but anyway we're going to start we're going to delve into it now um, and welcome to another episode of Pump Fiction just to clarify we'll go through out there none of us are actually medical professionals so for legal reasons please don't listen to anything we say and this is merely an opinion not fact just stating we'll get out there so no one sues us I'm quite happy with that that's fine a disclaimer but yes we're back hello everyone it's good to be here hi We've all had very busy weeks, as always, but we could never miss an episode, and especially... Apart from last week when we missed this episode. Well, we've, <laughs> we've, we're here now. <laughs> but we're still here. Especially considering how big a deal this episode is. Isn't that right, chaps? Trent, mm, yeah. Michael. Drugs. Yes, yes. Michael, you, are you all right, Michael? You no, I'm just... I'm taking in... You're fading away big, already. ...how big this episode is. Okay. No, trust anything, I'm peak, starting to peak. Starting a peak, he's the J- the Java monster, the deep, the you know the Demogorgon is releasing slowly within your bloodstream. Definitely, and I'm really intrigued to hear what we have to say about. We're all this. in we're all in black to celebrate this occasion. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, that was definitely planned. Yeah. And my hands are very clammy right now. Oh, your, same. Your hands are always very clammy. <laughs> um, but yes, so we're going to be talking about performance engine drugs. Um, Thoughts, thoughts, feelings. Where do we, we begin? Where do we begin? That's the trick. Is where do we start? Do you think we should maybe clarify what, what are they? They are because a lot of people don't know what they are. Michael, God. I think. Oh you, God, you can go. lead with that go one. On. Let's what go. A performance enhancing drug. Hmm. Well, they're typically used in sports. Um, they've been around for a long time as well. Like historically, someone would say, "Oh, you're just on steroids." And yeah. But there's so much more than just steroids. Is that correct? Am I right in saying that? Yeah, I think ultimately steroids are a means of performance enhancement. But when you say steroids, it's like saying, I don't know, gym. Do you know what I mean, like, what, what do you do? There's so many steroids. Yeah, and it's I like think, I drive a car. What car do you drive? The thing about steroids are is obviously there are steroids that use in medical terms. Too, my my so mum was on steroids for a while. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, nutty. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, she's so juiced. Her, her, her bench was amazing. Uh, but yeah, so you've got anabolic steroids is what we're talking about. Yeah, that's essentially. what we're discussing today. But yeah, I'd say a performance enhancing drug is basically what it says on the tin, a drug that enhances your performance. Okay, fine. And but they were developed a long time ago. Yeah, 
They're many, not, many, they've many been times. around a lot longer than people realise. A lot longer. I think, I think the reason we're having this discussion now is because they have been around a long, long time. However, I feel, and you guys may well agree, in the last five years or so, maybe more, they've become far more commonplace and almost uh, normalised than they ever have been. Mm. Like bef- Historically, if you watch like documentaries like Pumping Iron or Generation Iron, for example... It's like the elephant in the room. No one, yeah. there's no talk about it. Everyone just talks about how hard they train and how much they eat to mm. look like that. And it's the same with World's Strongest Man. When I was a kid, I used to think those guys were completely natural and they just ate a lot and they were just incredible. Same with like WWE as well. Yeah, uh, all that stuff. And actors and the Hollywood, you know, you know, blockbuster mm. movies and stuff. You just, you know, you see the magazines that say, do the, the 300 workout to look like, you know, who, you know these warriors yeah, and what yeah. have you or look like Thor how Thor got his arms for whatever this that and the other and to the non you know to the non-educated you just you might just assume you do that workout you do that you? workout <laughs> I right. also want to clarify if you actually look at most of the workouts they promote 90% of them are absolutely crap yeah. it's just really bad um, was it I can't, a lot of them are written by kind of editors aren't they the magazines yeah. they're like yeah. what can we put in that's very vogue at the moment Wait, what, what's everyone doing at the moment is everyone doing day. functional training is everyone doing yeah. barbell training <laughs> is everyone doing body weight training let's just build a workout that looks like that might be something they do but in the last in the last few years so obviously I've been going to gyms for like 10 years and I never used to hear any mention of drugs at all in gyms in the, in the early years but over the years the communication between person to person in the gym it's now become to the point where i will overhear people talking about cycles and talking Mm. about what they're on or who got it you know what this that and the other and for me it i find it shocking because like i've been training i've you know i've strived very hard to get where i am in the last 10 years and now i see these young guys who have joined have got their gym membership in week one and then week two, they're chatting to their mates about what people are taking. And that kind of blows my mind. I, I think some, some of the reason why that might have occurred is the internet. So the ability to, the availability of these things. Like before, you used to have to know someone that knew someone. That How do you get hold of it is a serious question. <sighs> well, I'm probably not best placed to answer that question, but I do... I, do, I think I still think there is that referral network where like you kind of know someone. I mean, someone. ultimately, how do you get hold of drugs in general? Yeah, through a drug dealer. Yeah. And yeah. Actually, that's what it is. You essentially go down the route. Oh, there are different ways. You, you can purchase them online through certain websites that basically mask them for medical purposes, purposes only or animal testing, all those things. And essentially, they send them to you. And if you get caught, the Royal Mail will say that's naughty. And you're like, oh, didn't know it was mine, whatever. And they leave it there. Um or yeah, or you go to a drug dealer or like I said, a referral network of, oh, my friend knows this person who knows this person mm. who's a bodybuilder who sells drugs at his gym. Do you want me to put you in contact? And then you go from there. I mean, that that's outside of like the normal official channels. Obviously, then when you look at professional sport, like there's a whole like ringer of like, you know, they have doctors that are involved and it's all done yeah. very professionally. And it's all monitored and stuff. So, you know, for us average people, we obviously don't have access to that. Yeah, we don't have doctors on the books and coaches that are also chemists yeah and that's also built into what you said about with celebrities as well like when these celebrities sign up for these films and they have to be a certain way by a certain deadline because of filming they almost get the contract signed like here's your chef and here's your personal trainer and also here's this other person who's going to be a part of your team that's the thing when you kind of when you say like the reality is a lot of hollywood stars have taken anabolics to to make those incredible transformations Mm. everyone's no you're just being lazy i've said well you think about it is it why is it that suddenly if you're a Hollywood star, you have the genetic capabilities to make unreal transformations that not no one else in the world yeah. can really make, but you just happen to also be not only a, a credible actor or actress, a genetic elite? You, you're, like not, Chris, you're not. Christian Bale can go from The Machinist. where That's he's, the famous one, isn't it? Yeah, where, he's yeah, basi- yeah. where he's basically 50 something kilos. emaciated from eating nothing to being jacked and Batman. 96 kilos looking pretty juicy. And then yes. you've got Hugh Jackman playing Wolverine and his veins are literally about to burst out of his body. I Top. literally, yeah. I had a, a chat on the gym floor this week about that exact one with Christian Bale and the, the look on the person's face and, and they were like, yeah, because you know, da 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 and I looked at him and I was like, and you honestly think that, that he did that on his own? And he was like, yeah. And I went, really? There's, I, things I, is I like, blew, his, blew his mind and he went, oh my God. I, I think the sad reality is, is, 
people often don't understand how common performance housing drugs are. Mm. Like, I mean, like, I think I remember a stat years ago. I mean, it's probably about eight years ago before it kind of started really picking up. They reckon at least 25% of, like, uh, I would say consistent gym users had at some point used a performance enhancing drug. I'd mm. heard I'd heard it was like a third, like, mm. you know, a few years ago. And it's probably yeah. more than that now. Yeah, mm. I wouldn't be surprised. Mm. I would not be surprised. And ultimately, when you go look at... I think realistically, everyone's like, oh, I can't believe Chris Hemsworth did drugs to look like Thor. <laughs> if someone comes up to you and says, in, you need to look pretty fucking juiced in six months. Here's you can't do it naturally. I'm going to give you $10 million to do it and some drugs under professional guidance. Yeah, and we'll make sure that you know it doesn't harm you and yeah. we'll get you back to it's normal. As safe yeah, as, yeah. as possible, would you do it? Which, I'm sorry, yeah. but I would be... Load me up, boys. I'll, be like, I'll sign now. Yeah, <laughs> I should have started weeks ago. Where, yeah. where, why are you I've already so started. <laughs> now, I think the problem there is is that that's a, that's almost like a different different topic altogether because ultimately there's a an end product, there's a purpose to why they're doing that. Mm. It's their job. This their job, mm. and the difference is that your average guy in the gym. A, it's not their job, and B, they're not going to have any medical professionals advising them on what to take, how much to take, when to take it, and what to do, how long to take it for, and what to do when they're not, when they're no longer taking it, and what to do if it starts going wrong. That, so and that's the thing, and I that think. blows my mind is because like it's because no because there's no like official support for people who want to do it. Like I'm not saying I'm not literally saying don't do it. You shouldn't do it. Because if you if you want to do it, then fine, but be be warned. But ultimately, there's no guidance. I think that's the thing is, if you are going to go do, down that route, you have to understand that, like with anything, it is a risk. You are actively manipulating hormones within your body and you are putting substances that have been artificially made in a lab into your body. And like with a lot of things, you don't know what's actually in them. So if you go get some drugs from a drug dealer you have no insurance policy that you are buying what you think you're buying same with drugs certain like steroids mm. are heavily faked so one of the big ones that probably arguably the most fake steroid out there is something called primo violence so primo and it is so horrendously faked but then they often fake it with something like potentially testosterone so if you take 500 milligrams of primo it's a relatively safe dose like you you shouldn't expect anything bad to happen you take 500 milligrams of test so it's a lot stronger than primo is so mm. therefore the side effects might be more of a, a thing and women often take primo if they do go down the enhanced route and taking the amount of primo they would but transferred over to test can be really problematic for them but what are you can do tell your drug dealer that he sold you a lie and that you could call the police yeah. probably not do you mean it, it's a big risk i think ultimately when you have no idea of what you're doing most people I think will rely on bodybuilding forums that will say to you, mm. uh, and I quote, uh, 500 tests a week or you're a pussy. That's what, that's a big one on the bodybuilding.com forum. It's literally those words or simply shredded. And back, back in the day, you'd be like, that's just starting cycle. That's a, that's a lot of test. That is and I know pro bodybuilders who take less tests than that because that's quite a lot. But back in the day, it's what bodybuilders said. And ultimately you didn't have that guidance from a coach or anything. No. So you, you went off the forums. You don't know these people. You don't know their qualifications, their credentials. So I think in that case, it's really important to actually probably get a coach. What what blows my mind again is that if you... So people obviously get advice from their friends or someone else who's doing it that's worked for, let's say. But if you went to a doctor with a health problem and they prescribed you a drug, you wouldn't... You wouldn't if you were someone else in a similar situation you wouldn't just copy like for like what they'd been prescribed well if you and i go for a drink yes and there's, there's, a, there's a big weight difference correct do you know what I mean? high difference as well and it takes it takes me five beers to get drunk are you going to assume that it's going to take you five beers as well to get drunk probably Pro not probably not no. it, it might based on just anatomy you would expect it probably take you less yes you don't know how you would respond and i don't know how i'm going to respond mm. so why would you there's copy so me expecting the same results there's so many variables in a human body and a human's reaction to different substances that why would you then look at these products that you know nothing about and just assume that if if you take the same as this guy over here then you'll be, then that's what you need to do that's fine that's what i should be doing i think people also overlook the fact of your genetic i guess makeup can can give you an indication of things you should probably look out for so if you come up to me say harry i've i've actually got pretty high cholesterol my my 
bad cholesterol is pretty not not too good then you can assume that taking an enhancement that's actually going to enhance the negatives you're already experiencing so your bad cholesterol is going to get even worse or if you're like oh i've got really bad i've got i'm, I'm balding i've got androgenic alopecia i've got male pattern baldness then you go on gear you're probably going to lose your Speed hair it's going to accelerate all your processes you get you've got gyno you've had gyno naturally for a few years and you finally got rid of it guess what you, you probably you might get gyno again mm. if you've never had any of those things if you've got a great family history of like my dad's got good hair my mom's got good hair my grandparents have good hair then you are probably more likely to maintain a better hairline but it's going to accelerate any process yeah but the do you think as well like some of the reason why it's more prevalent now is like, i remember when i got into the gym like steroids were this big like big bad wolf like dual gold oh, yeah, but you can dare some if they're on steroids because it's a bull and then nowadays it's almost like the next and i don't like to use maybe maybe it's a bad way to put it but the next logical step from like taking supplements is then going into, into no, no, enhancement I, I would tell you i would tell you why it's become more commonplace and it is social media as we've said before and it's also the fact that we are, as a culture, as, as humans, we are no longer willing to wait for anything mm. because social media means that we want to look a certain way. So that's your first problem. We see the TV shows are picking the muscly people for like Love Island and, you know, Geordie Shaw and things like that. So that's the first problem. I want to look like that. So you've got yeah. problem number one. Second thing is, I order all my products from Amazon Prime. I get it next day. Why shouldn't I get my everything? Mm. Like when when I grew up, if you ordered something, you probably waited seven days to to ten days. You know, you waited longer for things to happen, or you worked hard for things. These days, people are willing to pay. Who feel like they can buy their way through everything in life. Like, you know, when you wanted a car in the old days, you would save up to get it. Now you just put it on credit and pay it off monthly because you want it now. Mm. And it's the same with that look. I want to look like that guy on Instagram. How do I do it? And how do I do it as soon as possible? Yeah. It's taken me, like, I would, it, I would say it probably took me <laughs> six to seven years to get a body that I felt happy with, like, physically. And even then, I wasn't winning competitions. I've picked up trophies, but I wasn't w- beat. Every stage I ever stepped on, I was at a, I was at a you know, a disadvantage to the, to the guys I was surrounding with that were jacked. Mm. and yet I still did it because you know it was my journey and I want you know I was still I still in myself believed that I could beat that mm. um and and yeah 10 years on from training I do feel like I've got I'm very I'm very proud of how I look but it's taken me 10 years to get yeah. to that level do you honestly expect these kids in the gym if I turn around and said to them it's going to take you 10 years before you I mean obviously it's different person to person you get people with better genetics and better abilities to build muscle who can probably do it quicker. But most people don't appreciate the journey. No, like I, patience is a virtue. I love training and yeah. I love the fact that I'm in control of building my body the way I want it to. I can work on certain areas and you know we talk about it at great length and we l- love what we do. But most of these kids don't really love that journey and that process. They just... W- do whatever it takes. They want, to the look, they want the result for their holiday, which is coming up in a month's time. And once the holiday's done, they'll probably just go back to eating like an idiot and probably training less. And you know, mm. they'll forget whatever it is they've shoved in their body, or you know, they might do it again. So, you know, and this is why we are where we are. I feel. I think ultimately the the reality is, I think this is not unfair to say, is if someone comes up to you and says, "I really want a Lamborghini. I'm going to save for ten years. I'm going to save ten years to get that Lamborghini." Within that ten year period, they're probably not going to want a Lamborghini anymore. Their goal, their, their goal is going to change and no longer want to save mm. for it. Same round, if you say to someone, to get the physique you want, you've got to work for it for 10 years. Within that 10 year period, a lot of them probably turn around and say, I don't, don't know if I want it anymore, to be honest. Yeah, life, like, life catch yeah, up it, with them. It, it's, there are a few people, I think, that are willing to dedicate their life to a lifestyle like achieving aesthetic goals or even just a workplace promotion. Someone says, I want to be a, a a head partner of a law firm it's going to take me 20 years to get there within that 20 years most people who say that probably don't want to be a partner anymore they probably decide something else and they fall off say I'll go elsewhere because I can't be asked commit 20 years to it it's a lot of people same sort of thing but I think the reality is is social media I think the whole concept of I think like the natural status really kind of blowing up probably about 
eight to ten years ago when you had in individuals like Simeon Panda, Matt mm. Ogre. So it's kind of the original, like, quote unquote, fake natty crew that essentially first got exposed or called out for being fake natties. And then they started, like, Matt Ogre especially started making jokes about being a half natty. And it never, and that, that became, because it became a joke, it then also became a bit more normalized. And then within yeah. the last few years, more and more people started coming out about it. The first person I remember speaking about anabolic use was Boston Lloyd, who is unfortunately, I think, at 29 years old, passed away now, which is, which is such a shame. But he was what? very brutally open about his transformation because his year transformation was unbelievable, as in like night and day. But he also came out and said, I believe he took 13 different drugs to make in that year. It's a lot. And he came out and spoke about it. Everyone went viral because no one's ever spoken about the anabolics they'd be taking. They're like, wow. And all these Olympians came out and said, he takes more than I've ever taken. I'm a bloody Olympia like competitor. And that started becoming more of a thing. More and more people started talking about it, which is fantastic. Like with a lot of taboo subjects, it's really good to talk about it. But the caveat to that is the more and more you talk about it, the more and more you normalize it. And in some cases, that I think it's pretty good to normalize something. Mental health, for example, a lot of people experience it. Let's normalize it. Mm. Anabolics, it can be really beneficial to speak about it because it educates people and also opens up the kind of realities of these are the, the, the bad things you've got to worry about. But flip around the negative is that because it does normalize it, does it encourage a lot of the younger generation to be like, well, this is not scary anymore. This is I hear about this every day. I'm not scared of, of the drugs. Mm. So I'm going to think about doing the drugs at 17, 18 years old. And it goes back to what you said earlier about having a right to make that decision. You need to earn that right. Yeah. I think a, a lot of people just think, you know what, my noob games, my noob games are over. <laughs> Sorry. What, what have you done? It just popped off. <clears throat> <laughs> I've lost my... <laughs> he's, he's broken it. I'm back on. That's Roy's that's Roy's Rage, everyone. Remember that? But it's a lot of people get... <laughs> job a monster, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> too juiced. But a lot of people get to the point where they're like, you know what? My noob gains are done. I've been training for a year. Progress is starting to slow a bit. I'm not making the kind of almost like weekly progress I was before. What's next? It's like tough shit. I'm um, so obviously at the end of the day, personal choice. But I think if you're going to make that decision, come talk to me in 10 years. And then, yeah. then, we'll, then we'll see how you feel. The, th the main thing is <coughs> that the human body is a brilliant thing, <coughs> especially if you're in, let's say you're in your early 20s and you're getting into the gym. The, the amount of, growth and potential your body still has for so many years all the way up to your you know your 40s if you're not fully testing your body's own ability to grow and achieve and get strong and so on if you're immediately throwing in these alien substances it's just going to stop your body doing all those natural things it was capable of doing you haven't fully tested yourself like i feel right so cards on the table now i am tempted by the concept of it and maybe the most the safest thing possible whatever that would be because i'm 38 next month and as far as i'm concerned yeah i've kind of reached a point where now i can't really expect to get much bigger than i have than i have and and yet i still love the process of training and improving but obviously i feel like maybe i can't go much beyond what i've done so therefore do i now given the fact that i've reached my physical peak do I now look to enhance myself? I guess the, the, the question I'd always ask is why? And yeah, I, agree. I think ultimately agree. It, it's I'm, I, I never speak about my natural status online. I never have since I first went on to the world of the online in 2016, because ultimately it, it's irrelevant to my brand. I, a, I, I, don't, yeah. I never claim I'm natural, never will claim I'm natural, never have claimed I'm natural. And essentially my, my physique is not something I market myself with because 99% of people on my YouTube channel have no idea what I look like without a extra 3XL t-shirt on and a, hat. And, it, and, it, and, a, and a hat and it'll remain that way so for that reason I don't feel like it, whether I'm natural or not is, is irrelevant but when it comes to people who say I'm, I'm going to take gear I'm going to do this and this it goes back to what you said earlier of why like I, I for the people who say I just want to get bigger again your body your choice but to me I, I, I don't see for me personally I wouldn't really see the drive to take such a risk without doing so with the desire of, of maybe a competitive outcome yeah. or, or a, a real goal in mind you, rather than just I want to get a bit bigger do you think it might be because you said there why would they take such a risk and I kind of go back to my point earlier do these people even consider it as much of a risk as they should they well it's like the conversation I had with the, the guy I said about and so, uh, an 18 year old says to me I want to go on gear and I said 
18 years old, you, you think you're mature enough to make a decision that could take years off your life, ruin your relationships with your friends and family, ruin your hairline, put you on hormone replacement therapy for the rest of your life, render you potentially infertile. All these things that 18 year olds have probably never considered that you are now opening up that, that floodgate mm. of these could all actually get to you. And this 18 years old, you want to make that decision. And they're like, oh shit, didn't think about that. Yeah, because like I said they, the the they see the rewards, they see the the pros online of all yeah, these yeah. big bodybuilders and they're loving life. They get bigger, they have great workouts, all these great things. They don't see the downside. They don't see what happens when they come off cycle. They don't see what happens behind with the the potential instability of mood. Yeah, so yeah. many the hair loss and yeah. how that can. I think I think it's fair to say for men, one of the biggest insecurities that men may have is, is losing their hair. So male pattern baldness, I think, is a huge insecurity for men. Do you want to accelerate that process? Because it, it may hit you bloody hard. And if yeah. you've already got a, a bit of a, a hairy hairline, then say yeah. goodbye. You or might not. as well say goodbye now. <laughs> yeah, or not yeah. indeed. Do you think it's like that a thing of like the grass is always greener? So there's yeah. like, oh, that, that person's already got it. They're doing it. Why can't I do it? And it's like, you have to accept the risks yourself and understand yeah. what they are before you even entertain this idea. I think the, the reality is, is it, no two people are the same. It impacts people differently. I know people who have gone on a, a cycler test and it's slaughtered their mental health. I mean, sl- their anxiety spiked. It's really ruined them. I know people who have gone on a very low dose of tests who have got gynecomastia, have got horrendous acne, like really unfortunate side effects. But I also know people who have gone on tests and it's done nothing but wonders for them. It's helped their mental health. Their skin's actually got better because ultimately when people have this idea of acne is caused by this is this, the reality is acne is largely caused by the hormonal fluctuation. So it's usually worse when you start and worse when you come off, but, and then kind of stabilizes in the middle. But I know people, it's just, it's done amazing things for them. And they're like, you know, what a great decision, but you put two people next to each other, their experiences are going to be very different, mm. even on such a, a, a low dose or a starting cycle of test. Definitely. I think it's a curiosity for me because I'm addicted to progress and that's probably why I'm always picking up new sports and hobbies and stuff because I love the fact that I can start something and I can find a tangible way to improve at it. Like for example, the running, I'm now hell bent on, I'm doing another 10K next month and I'm hell bent on improving on the time I did at my last event and then my structure, my training around that to improve uh, and so on and so forth. And my bodybuilding process was the same. I was very committed with my diet and my training and everything was geared around me making improvements, working towards competitions or photo shoots. And I, I enjoy that process. And therefore for me with bodybuilding, because I can't, I'm, I look, I'm happy with how I look. I'm proud of how I look, but now I feel like why, if I'm coming to the gym and I, and I'm not physically improving myself, I'm just maintaining myself. Then what's the point? What's the this? point? Well, what I was going to ask you, the interesting question is, do you feel, because essentially you've been training 10 years, I think it's fair to say, at, at, even at my age, when it's training 10 years, once you've been training 10 years, you, you expect progress is going to be really slow. You, you a percent, percentage of your sort of thing. You're not going to make a lot, but you have to train even harder to make that almost less progress. Do you feel that because you're at the stage where progression has slowed so much and you have to put so much in just to even get that percentage gain, it's almost like, well, you know, I'm going to invest my energy into something that I'm new at because I can progress at that faster, like it bodybuilding when you started. Level and, six and, skiing. Yeah, level six skiing. <laughs> and then flip it around. <laughs> if you were to go on anabolics, because you've now, because essentially, what, regardless of what anyone says, anabolics are not going to do shit for you unless you put the work in. They do not get you from here to here. They just simply raise your ceiling from here to here, and then you have to work to kind of fill that gap. Yeah. Do you feel like because your ceiling would now be higher is you're elevated you now have this gap to fill rather than kind of being near the top you would then probably take a bit of emphasis away from your other bits and bobs like the running the climbing and maybe invest more into bodybuilding because you know you're going to get more out of it again almost like you were kind of midway through your journey quite yeah i mean that makes a, that makes a massive amount of sense because like i i'm not afraid of the hard work that is involved in improving at something i'm a dedicated guy you probably see that in a lot of the things that i do so therefore, if you could say to me that suddenly <coughs> I can almost, I can give, I can can start at the bottom again of mm. something and start yeah. working up again. You could finally progress at a, a, good, a good rate again. Kind of sounds exciting. Yeah, it, of course it is because yeah. you've done this for 10 years. This is your passion. This is something you genuinely love. You wake up every day and not once you regret in pursuing this journey. I no, see not it. at all. Yeah. Imagine, then you get to the point where like, imagine, well, I, I can, I'm not saying the fire's not there, but I can make the fire bigger. It sounds uh, it's exciting, isn't it? Annoyingly, you make it sound very exciting. But then, but, but what we spoke about is 
what, what about your wife? Do you want kids? Yeah, of course. Well, yeah. Imagine the impact that could have on your fertility. But this that, is that's the, the thing. This is exactly it, and this is the thing that gets to me is that as as much as what we just said there sounds fantastic, mm. there are so many things that it will impact that uh, in the grand scheme of things. I feel like my that's the stuff we just talked about is a selfish desire. Well, I think ultimately it's how you sell it. So I've just done what I feel like a lot of social media influencers do. Where I, I've sold you the, I've told you all the good yes. and suddenly you're excited by it. But what if, what if I said the same thing and said, oh, I'm not really progressing much, but do you really want to take something that could potentially take years of your life? You could lose your hair and you might, you potentially, you might not be able to have kids. Your skin could break out and you'll be like, actually, that doesn't sound very exciting anymore. And it's you about how you market it. And you might need to be taking these drugs for the rest of your life. Yeah. Imagine the inconvenience that is, especially if you don't have a prescription to do it and again we know getting a prescription for hormone replacement therapy in the uk is, 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 is a bit harder than it is in america from what i've heard imagine being like chris you want to go on holiday for three you want to go traveling for a month how much fun would that be you can't take your hormone replacement therapy because you don't have a prescription to do so and you're not taking needles abroad so how are you going to feel with your testosterone in the pan on holiday you're probably going to feel pretty crap it's going to it's going to be a bit of an inconvenience do you think with that it's like when when you tell the downsides people go oh, that'll be a tomorrow person's problem yeah, oh, yeah i'll just deal with the you know what i'll take the risk <coughs> it's easy to take the risk when someone's paying it in the future yeah the future self like it's one of those psychosocial kind of things isn't it i think it's one of the things if you're going to commit to gear again personal choice you know your body your choice but you have to understand that this could be a commitment that you have to make for the rest of your life. And a lot of people don't see it that way. They say, I'll, play it I'll, I'll just do a cycle. Yeah, play it forward. Yeah, what's, it, what's your life going to be like? You don't just do a cycle. Whatever you gain on that cycle, eventually you probably will lose what you've gained on that mm. cycle because you don't have that additional hormone kind of levels to, to maintain it. Yeah. But, okay, I'll do two cycles, okay? <laughs> then you'll do three. And then you'll yeah. do four. And now you need TRT. I mean, it's, you've now committed yeah. for your life. I have I have met young <clears throat> young guys in their early to mid twenties that are already on testosterone replacement therapy. Yeah. I think the thing is a lot a lot of people that's in, I know there are a lot of the young guys is again this is I may be incorrect here, but this is between two and two together. Is when you go on hormone replacement therapy, I've I've had I've spoken to kids who are like the early 20s saying i think i'm going trt so well you're trying to elevate your testosterone artificially to where it already is naturally the only thing that would be different is it's just more consistent regardless of whether you had a shit night's sleep or not but the thing people don't understand is your balls produce more than just testosterone they are not purely there for testosterone mm. you have other considerations like lh and fsh things that can directly impact fertility so i believe it's a luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone something along those lines yeah. um those things can directly impact especially luteinizing hormone uh fertility if your balls turn off and it's no longer producing one of the hormones that's pretty fi- vital for t- for fertility Regardless of whether you're on TLT or not, your balls are still not doing yeah, their job. They're still job. switched off. They're still they're dormant. <laughs> they're sleeping. But then, yeah. but then you'll look at someone like Brandon Curry, who's Mister, who was a former Mister Olympia. He's got like four or five kids. Well, I think Ronnie Coleman has like eight or something. So it is not impossible to get. Uh, to, I think from what I've heard, it's just less likely to get pregnant when you're on or to have a child when you're on TLT because essentially it does mm. negatively impact fertility. And a lot of people do come off and is it HCB? I want to say one of the things that basically kicks out your balls again that helps if you're pushing for a child. The thing with that, though, what you've just said there about, oh, but this guy, it's like the, th- the power of social media is obviously to bring you closer to people you'd never have any business getting to know. Mm. If you follow enough people, you might see 100 people who are fine. Yeah. And in your head, you're like, oh, that's see, all these people well, are fine. One of the guys I'll I be follow, fine. Yeah, one of the guys I follow was on a huge cycle, his biggest cycle ever. He was taking like two and something grams of gear, which is a lot of gear. <laughs> and uh, he got his girlfriend pregnant. And he was like, well, I didn't think that was going to happen. But cause it can still happen. It's just a bit harder to do so. Yeah. It just doesn't help your chances. God, that's scary, isn't it? I mean, I'm just literally absorbing this. It's just like, it's, it, it's madness. But like, but the thing is like the fact that we're talking at such broad spectrums are so many different things to discuss here. And yet seemingly it's shrunk down into this tiny little thing that's just kind of like an afterthought for a lot of people in the gym. Like they, you take one tiny thing and it blows, there's so many different discussion mm. points and so many different arguments for to and for, for and against why you should be doing it you know age related performance related all these things and yet most people just like oh i just want to look good for holiday well see i think the thing yeah. is we can be, be, essentially what we're saying obviously a lot of what we're saying is basically based on opinion like i said we're not medical professionals and a lot of this is anecdotal as well from people we've spoken to and what they've told us and friends etc cetera, etc cetera. so again it may be incorrect in the literature but from what they've told us this is what we've heard etc 
but a lot of people just don't understand that steroids are just that's you that's the umbrella what's under yeah. the umbrella you i can name dozens of different steroids and you're like wow i didn't think there were more than just a few yeah so many so many they've all been designed to try and do certain things as well aren't they yeah and, and as you said like you know it's all very well yeah we are saying things in an anecdotal way we're not medical professionals but at the same time people aren't textbooks either so yeah. all that stuff that you guys have been saying is so true like you just don't know you could follow it to the letter yeah the perfect way and it could still fuck you up i think and there's also the, more plates more dates did quite a good video on like the anabolic family tree and basically there are like three branches of steroids mm. being also like testosterone i believe nandrolone was another one which then goes into like trend etc etc and then you've got primo etc etc on the other side and it's like wow i've seen that yeah it's, re it's really good yeah, it's, it's really it's good, good picture video. and a good video and but it's like fuck this is so much more complicated than i thought it was yeah and a lot of times people don't understand that. They'll be like, oh, my friend says I should probably take some D-Bowl because it'll make me really big. You probably will get pretty watery. You probably get quite strong. <laughs> you will look a bit a bit Michelin man-like. I remember yeah. going to like, because I visit various clients <clears throat> in different industries. And I just went to, went to like a one of my customers, just completely normal. And one of the guys who worked in the workshop, he's just a normal bloke. And he started talking about about going to the gym and stuff. And you, and you go, I've started going to the gym. Like, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, my mate said I should start taking some, I call it Russian D-Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> like, he said, I need Russian D-Bowl. Do I need Russian D-Bowl? I'm like, mate, I haven't got a fucking clue, but it doesn't sound like a great idea. <laughs> I think ultimately, like, the when I say people don't understand how common PDs are, Obviously, I know clenbuterol is not technically a steroid because it, um, although it has anabolic-like properties, it's not anabolic. It is just a performance-enhancing drug that's very, as much a very effective fat. I burner. hear about clen. Is it and it, and a lot it? of people talk about it in regards, but it's literally a, getting lean. It it's for? really good fat burner. I want to say it's like asthma in horses yeah, or something like it's that. It's some kind of like so you telling me I can, thing. So you telling me that I don't need to do all my cardio to get shredded? I can just take that. Your anxiety will likely spike to the roof. Your it's like you've hammered a fuck load of caffeine uh you'll be sweating you'll be shaking you feel quite sick some people probably aren't don't sick. sleep very well. uh your heart is going to be working overdrive it's quite taxi on the heart again depends on the person how much you take etc a lot of people take too much too quickly but when i say people don't understand how common shit like that is when i was 16 years old and my friends were all like oh we're going to maga and doing all that stuff like 16 17 of the group of like 20 that went i didn't go because it's not I, I don't drink it's not my vibe I want to say a good handful, at least five of them, people who had, some of them had no interest in the gym entirely, uh, went on Clen to get leaner for their holiday. Sick. My mechanic, I got to my mechanic, <laughs> speak to him. Oh, how are you doing? He's, yeah, I'm good. I want to lose a bit of weight for my wedding. So I started taking Clen. So you don't even go to the bloody gym. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it is so common. This, and this yeah. is essentially what I came, what we spoke about earlier, is you are not taking this route because you're hardworking, you're dedicated. I think for a lot of people, you're taking this because you're lazy and you're impatient and you essentially want you want that shortcut mm. you can lose weight for your wedding if you want to but you'll probably lose less weight it's like a longer period of time without clen than if you were to take clen but like i said it's very hard on the heart it's, it's, it's taxing it's taxing on the body yeah. the thing that the thing that that bothers me because it's so normal now is that i'll post a picture of myself and people will say nice things or I'll comment let's say I comment on something on Instagram and my profile picture on Instagram is one of my fitness photos and I'll get a troll reply back saying oh look at this guy on steroids look at yeah. all the juice and all that sort of stuff and it, and it annoys me because like like, I, like thank you but also fuck you yeah and it's like it's so boring like that whole kind of thing like just because if anyone now who looks in good shape dismissed is dismissed because yeah. it's because as far as everyone the, the rest of the world is concerned oh it's steroid the only way you can look like that now is to take steroids the thing is there are certain steroids will give you certain looks we know that typically oral steroids tend to be a bit faster acting and give you more of like a uh, almost like that cosmetic look that right. you, you know you're I'm, on orals i'm quite vascular because yeah. i'm quite lean at the moment but most people would say that to be vascular you only get that through drugs but it's not that at all it's simply because i'm lean also and I've had a lot, yeah and genetics I've are a huge factor and i've had a lot of carbs of late and the carbs are obviously make you look yeah. more pumped i think it, again, like I said, different steroids are different things. I don't say they give you different looks, but if you were taking testosterone versus Anavar, you would probably be a bit more... You Testosterone, they simply say, makes you just look like a bigger version of your natural self. But when you start taking things that are a bit more cosmetic, like orals, you'll be like, now yeah. I can see. But the go-to is that, oh, you don't look like this because of steroids. It's like, generous. That does not discredit the hard work. Let's say you were on steroids. It doesn't change shit. Because ultimately, I could take 
every drug in the world. I mean, every drug. I will never beat Ronnie Coleman. I will never beat Usain Bolt in a race. I will never do all these things that these mm. incredible athletes have ever done, regardless of whether I took 15 times more drugs than them. Hard work is, is a fact. I can certainly work pretty hard, but with genetic capabilities, not only your response to resistance training, your response to training in general, your response to drugs, because some people are pretty slow responders. Some people are hyper responders when they can take a bit of test and anavar and suddenly absolutely balloon, but other people will take a lot more to even get close to their response. There are so many factors to consider, but it's all too easy for people to say, you look better than me, must be drugs. Well, even if it is drugs, you still probably couldn't lift as much as I lift. I mean, even as society though, we always dismiss hard work. We always yeah. try to find a reason. It's easier to pull someone down than to pull yourself up. But it's just a projection it? of insecurities. And, and I think... You know, obviously, Chris, in your case, it's a lot easier for someone just to say, oh, it must be gear, because otherwise he's going to have to accept that he had just as much opportunity as you to get in that shape and because he couldn't be asked. I have... It's just easier just to say, well, he's taken gear, so yeah. almost dismiss you, discredit you completely. Well, is he, you know, obviously, Mandeep in the gym. Yeah. I have so many people come up to me and say, is, is Mandeep on gear? I said, I've known that man for five or six years, and his progress has been very natural. He's been training for 20 years consistently mm. without fail i said you train for 20 years and tell me you aren't baffled by your results you do anything <laughs> for 20 years and tell me you're not gonna be baffled by it. i mean do it well that man's been training i said i'll put my life on the fact he has never taken a drug in his life for performance enhancing purposes because i've, I've seen him train I've, like I said, if he's you meticulous. Do, yeah, and it's twenty years he's done this consistently. My friend I used to coach a guy called Russ, who was IPF silver medalist, world silver medalist in the um, Masters single ply, and he said, "Do you reckon he's on drugs?" I said, "That man has lifted consistently for twenty, thirty years. He squatted, I think, in sleeves two hundred ninety kilos at under hundred kilo body weight. Freak of a man at like forty eight years old." But I said, "Thomas." It's taken him a year to put five kilos on that squat. And that's bloody impressive. Five kilos in a year, that level of training. I was like, you think he's taking anabolics to get five kilos on that squat? I said, honestly, like I said, do it for 20 years and tell me how you feel about yourself. That is my usual answer to people. Like I come across them at work or on, on the internet or wherever that accuse me of taking drugs. My response to them is, look at me, right? I look pretty average. If I was taking drugs, I'd want to look a lot fucking bigger than I do right now. Because mm. I currently weigh like 73 kilos. And that's not a lot for someone who's like five foot, barely five foot eight. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? It, like, yes, I look good because I'm lean and I've worked on the shape of the muscle and stuff. But I'm not dense. I'm not, I'm not overly inflated. I still look pretty normal in clothes. But the thing is that kind of almost highlights natural status a bit is you look consistent. You look how you look without any massive changes in your physique. You certainly never blow up and shrink. Do you know I mean? You're pretty consistent. I look at you year round and say, Chris is good. Do you know I mean? I never be like, oh, Chris, Chris, you look at me. You're okay. You start being a bit off or something like that. Do you know I mean? But when you're obviously cycling, you, you take, you blast. Mm. And let's say you're blasting and cruising. You hammer a load of gear. You're obviously on gear. It's like, wow, you're looking good, looking good. Then you cruise and it starts simmering down a little bit, a little bit. And then you can tell you're on and you're off. It, it's very much a you can see when some people are on and they're off. It's Naturally, you don't have that fluctuation. It's incredible when you see some people that have obviously got massive and you might have met them when they were massive and then they stop and then they just shrink back to being what they would normally have been in their natural state. That's Where the their thing. body wants to be. Yeah. <laughs> like the best one I've seen is Dennis Wolf. Oh, yeah, yeah. So Dennis Wolf is used to compete at Olympia in the big open category. Absolutely mutant of a man. Huge guy, Huge. big German dude. I met him. Uh, Horrendously pale. There's More pale than I am. There's a brilliant it's photo incredible. of me with me with Dennis at one of the Arnold Classics, actually. He makes me look like a tiny, tiny he's, person. He's like five foot 11, isn't he? Yeah. Which is big for a bodybuilder. I've got a photo, I don't know if I've ever shown it to you, of him. Um, might be six foot, actually. Of him. He must have just got to the hotel that night because we were all in the hotel gym together, which was smaller than... The, it was half the size of this room. Yeah. He is stood hunched over a power plate trying to, like, just... He's obviously trying to loosen up his calves or something yeah. after the flight. But you've, I would have to find this photo. It's just this mad, giant man on a tiny power plate shaking his calf yeah. muscles. It's hilarious. <laughs> but in recent years, obviously, he retired and obviously he's taken all that shit out of his system. He is now just like, just going, hmm. well, and he's it, this tiny, tiny human again. Who was it? Was it, was it Dave Palumbo where they decided to tag it Palumboism? Have you heard about that? When people come off gear and they essentially, like Kevin Lavrone, prime example, 
did really well back in the day. He was, I would say, second place. He was incredible. Bit, but incredible he, his off boys let him down. His off seasons were famous there because he took nothing and he didn't train at all. Yeah. And he shrunk significantly. But then he, he quit, obviously, bodybuilding. And then he came back to bodybuilding and it was like, big comeback. Kevin's going to win the Olympia. Came last, last place. And it, it's the idea of when you come off and then you eventually, like, to that extent, and then go back on, you never look, you have never had that same look again. And that's what they call Palumboism. And another example of a wild off season, Lee Priest. Yes. Everyone knows his off season where yeah. his his cholesterol must have been horrendous, honestly. Because his big thing in off season was just, just gain as much weight as possible. And you look at him and be like, you've never lifted weight in your life. And suddenly, 20 weeks later, you're winning the, was it 212 Olympia or something? Lee Priest is probably one of my all-time favorite physiques. Like oh, his, physique. his look, Unreal. his look is just brilliant. Very nice guy, from what I've heard. Yeah, Australian guy. Hi, I'm Lee Priest. He talks like that. Banned from the IFBB. Yeah, because he talked about drugs. And he also uh, because called out as, the IFBB for their money. Because essentially, he was he was willing to be open about everything, and the IFBB didn't like that. Well, he also called them out saying. Uh, 15 of our competitors go to the Olympia stage sack fast I'll have to be here and you're only going to give money to the top like one or something so he said if I win I'm sharing my prize money with everyone because I think it's selfish that you don't give anyone any money and then suddenly they were like you're banned but Mm. I think the reality is is drugs are scary do you mean like it, it, it is a scary venture to go down? And I think that's ultimately why for years and years I've always been curious about it I've worked with so many people that have that have used drugs to make their career like i guess he probably won't mind me saying it but martin ford a friend of mine um obviously has made himself a hollywood actor through a lot of fucking hard work frankly yeah yeah of course course. and and he will say that and i I say that everyone else should say that but ultimately yes he probably has taken you know drugs to look that way Again, if someone's going to pay you a million dollars to be in a Fast and Furious movie, I'm not going to say no. And there you go. So therefore, you know, he he, you know, has been very successful at about with it and other bodybuilders, for, you know, pro people that I know. And so f- I've been around it and I've seen the effect it can, the positive effects it can have. But yet, for me, because it's not my career, it's not my career. Um, it's not my sport, other than the fact that yes, I did enjoy competing in bodybuilding, but I was realistic about it. So therefore, the risks for me completely outweighed the positives because like, I look all right. So why why can't I just be happy with the fact that I look decent and not put all that risk factor in there if I don't need to? Well, I, think, I, I think ultimately it does come down to very much a question of pros and cons. Write them down. But also be honest and about also the pros be, and cons. Also be honest about how much work you've done to that point. Well, I was thinking, have you ticked all the boxes beforehand? Have are you, you d- given yourself a fucking chance? So you could be like, I've been training for 10 years. Okay, that's fantastic. Well, you've, you've ticked that box, but what, have you ticked the other boxes? What do you mean other boxes? What's your sleep like? How's your diet been for the last few years? Is you tra- are you training well? Do you train smart, but you're also training hard? Mm. Like, Can you tick all of those boxes and say, I'm doing a pretty, pretty fucking good job with all of these things. Okay, now you can consider it. If you were to say like, yeah, man, be training a few years, but I'm just going to hop on. It's like, your training is like shit. You don't eat like shit. Yeah, but I've got a holiday. Yeah, I've got a holiday in a few weeks. It's crazy, man. No one cares. No one's going to look at you on the beach, but wow, that man looks sick. The only person who's ever going to try and look at themselves and be like, wow, I look sick. It's probably going to be you. Do you know what I mean? Your friends don't care. Your, the people you're trying to impress probably don't care. Do you know what I mean? And if you think you're going to be the biggest person I don't the know, beach, man. probably Pe- not, man. Peer pressure's a fucker. Your peer pressure it is, but most people also just don't care. They pressure, but it doesn't mean they care. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I think really they're not going to they're not going to dislike you because you you're not jacked. And also, you, again, you don't know how you'll respond. I know people have been on a fair, fairly sizable cycles where I would look at them and be like, I would have no idea because you look very natural to me. Mm. And you're like, either something is not you're not doing something right, or you're just a bit of a bad responder. It's just very unfortunate. But the other thing people tend to neglect is the 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 pre the pre drug routine almost. It's not just as simple as, like, Mike comes to me, let's say, and he says, Harry, I want to go on drugs. Do you mean, a lot of people think it's that easy. Suddenly it's like, okay, Mike, you're on drugs now, go. Okay, but it's not that easy. The go-to, you're going to be like, okay, well, let's, can you tick all those boxes? Training, blah, 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 cool. But also, what's, what's your health looking like? Oh, I don't know, I feel pretty good. Let's get your blood work done. So suddenly they go to whatever company, get their blood work done to a full panel, and they come back and said, oh, actually, your kidney's looking a bit spicy. Your cholesterol is not looking too juicy either. And all these things pop up and say, well, 
you're going to go on a drug that could make these a lot worse oh actually i don't think i'm healthy enough to mm. even consider taking that risk how many how many people who take performance enhancing drugs actually check their bloods oh pr- probably a lot less than that probably think, like five percent but what i find funny about that is that oh it's costly it's expensive it's like one thing well one your drugs are expensive and if two, you can't afford it don't do it if you're dead you can't do anything that's, anyway being dead is a bit of a nightmare that's that's that. not very bit, anabolic bit of, a, dead. bit of a tricky one do you know what the sad <laughs> reality is is that depending on what you take some drugs are quite hefty i mean primo for example is a very expensive drug it's considered a luxury because i think it's been tested into women up to like 1.3 grams with like minimal side effects so for a steroid it's quote unquote relatively safe it's a it's a weaker and safer quote steroid. Unquote, yeah, yeah, yeah like it's 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 a luxury drug mm. it's also bloody expensive a, a vial of primo is like 50 quid and that vial some people get through a vial a week and let's say you run that for 12 weeks. Lot, that adds up, man. Just that's primo alone. That's not the other stuff. Cost of living crisis, mate. Yeah, but then flip it around. You go on a starting cycle of test of, let's say, 250 test. That is probably going to cost you for a full cycle 12 weeks. It's probably going to cost you about 30 quid. Can I not get like the Aldi version? I'm not sure it works like that. thing is also, it's like when it comes to the cheap stuff, it's like surely you're going to want to put the best stuff in your body. Yeah, but like like <laughs> testosterone itself is really quite cheap. But then, like I said, other things are not so yeah, cheap. Yeah. Like, so some steroids are actually horrendous cheaper than creatine, even, especially now. Other steroids, that shit adds up. So, again, it's can you actually afford it? If you can't afford it, don't be a twat. Yeah. Okay, so we've kind of discussed a lot of the pros and cons. Oh, what? Drug testing. That's one we wanted to cover. Well, tell, talk to me. I'm basically, just stating that just because you pass a drug, uh, this is what we, can, we spoke about beforehand about. This is true, about competitions and so on. Competitions, but also these, Sport. Na- these guys who talk about, oh, I'm natural, drug test me. Just because you pass a drug test doesn't mean shit. It just means you were natural at that time. A thing that or people you, were, you passed mm, at that time. When I talk, when people ask me if I'm going to do competitions again, and I say mm, probably not because I got fed up of the disadvantage I was putting myself at, they were like, "Oh, can't you just do like t- drug tested competitions?" I'm like, "Yeah, I could, but there's nothing to say that I'm." S- the person competing next to me hasn't at some point in their life been on a cycle. And even then, the, you can or pass, ha- you can pass a piss test pretty quickly and still have a lot of the effects of the cycle you've just run. Yeah, they could, they or could, you could mm, just pass a test. They could, literally, they could literally do a cycle to get big and then get lean naturally and then pass the test fine. But even, ultimately, it's not fair on me still. And, and the tests, when they were actually conceived as tests, were made to be beatable from day one. The other thing is... So Sometimes, people know how to get around them. Yeah, that, well, anyone watch Icarus, you get an idea. It's like essentially yeah. drug testing really doesn't mean a lot. And the expensive drug tests, these federations can't afford. I mean, even when I was looking at a job once, um, which I probably won't speak about, but I had to drug test for that job. And when if I told you the job, you'd expect this to be a thorough drug testing procedure, considering the nature mm. of the job. Um, they just told me to go down the, literally down the corridor, go for a piss. Were you going to be a butler for the royal family? I oh, nailed it. He's nailed it. Got him. I was going to be a driver. Um, but he just literally just, just told me, say, go down the corridor, go to the toilet, go for a piss in this cup and come back. No one watched me. No one did anything. I was lit, I was many meters away in a, a door with another door with a cubicle. I could have just poured anyone's piss in there and then no one would have even and you and that And that is exactly what's in your flask as well, isn't it? Other, <laughs> other people's piss. I drink it. Just for anabolic case. properties. Just, 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 in, just case. in case. He never knows when he's going to get that test. There you go. Good there stuff. There you go. Um, okay, so all things considered, uh, pros and cons. Let's say you have listened to this and you feel like you still want to go through with enhancing yourself. Or let's say hypothetically I did. Or you anyone. Super physiological levels of testosterone in your body. Do you have any recommendations? Again, these are opinions, but do you or you or any of us have recommendations let's say that you want to get on it and push yourself to the next level i think it's one of the things is if you're adamant for whatever reason you're going to do it anyway and you've ticked those boxes i've mentioned you've been training for enough years you've been training let's say seven to ten years um you've been training hard smart eating well sleeping well you've nailed those variables financially you're stable stress is in check you're committed as fuck all all those things so you tick every box and you're going to do it anyway ultimately it comes down to get your blood work done if that comes back and you're looking pretty, pretty juicy, pretty good, it's definitely a good sign. Make sure you've ticked all those kind of health markers. We've got on checks. They've got like a full blood panel you can do for like 150 quid. I've as a done discount. that. It's good. Yeah, it's good. 
Um, you get discount codes as well, so it saves you 10%. You're going to do it anyway. Don't listen to the forums. The bodybuilding forums will either tell you to take orals only, which arguably there are some orals you could consider using as a base. I think arguably you could say uh, d bowl could be another one because it doesn't just it i think it as far as the way it like replaces testosterone doesn't suppress things like anavar suppresses so you probably get feel a bit shitty without a testosterone base but i say it, it's probably best if you are or as best as it can be just doing testy so just testosterone twice a week and um, totaling anywhere from about 200 to 250 milligrams of test per week for eight to 12 weeks but do you not think that people should try and find an authority, an authoritative person? Oh, yeah, person? get a coach. I, I, I'm going on the assumption that everyone's got a coach who actually knows what they're doing. Yeah, but that's about. unlikely. Well, so therefore, if you, but I think ultimately, if you're committed and dedicated to anything like bodybuilding, and you don't have a coach, you're probably not that committed and dedicated. Do you know what I mean? Because find me a pro bodybuilder or someone who's aspiring to be a pro. Yeah, but someone looking at them is better than them. I feel like I feel like I'm quite a good judge of improving myself, and yeah, I do get the opinions of. Well, I other... think you've got people like Ryan in your corner. Yeah, I've got some big boys in my corner, but I still don't consider them to be the authority on how much of something I should take because, like you know, Ryan doesn't take much himself either. So why, why would he know? I think it's more a question of just finding a coach who knows who knows their shit. Like you can get coaches who are chemists you can get coaches who are physiologists and i think that's the essential really is finding finding someone who has some sort of qualification to prescribe yeah but i think ultimately no one is qualified enough to actually prescribe it even a doctor wouldn't prescribe you that level of test because that's beyond hormone replacement therapy but it's more question if you're going to do anyway ignore the forums because the forums will tell you 500 milligrams of test a week which is a lot more than most people will ever take or need to take to achieve their goals so i'd say like a, an expected starting cycle for most men i'll say not women is going to be anywhere from 200 to 250 tests a week women typically i think depending on goals you might look at like a, a first site of i guess a first endeavor could be consideration of maybe anavar could be a consideration of probably unlikely due to what i've previously mentioned could consider primo as like a starting kind of base but again i'm far more clued up in the the male side or men's enhancements are on women's because I think it's a much trickier ball game for women to start pissing with PEDs but there are some really good resources out there there's a woman I follow called I think uh, she's a I want to say she's an IPB pro I think her Instagram handle's Corey Fit or something if anyone actually cares send me a message I'll link them um, but she's really clued up I think she's IFBB bikini or sim- similar but she's really clued up on women and PEDs far more than I ever will be I think that's an- another interesting thing is that don't just assume that it's predominantly men that are taking stuff because one thing I noticed through uh, all the competing uh, female comp- bikini competitions I did was the the women and they clear- love Clen and Annabelle. They're clearly on a lot of stuff, especially at pro level, and even and it's filtering down more, even just to beginner level as well. It's just becoming so 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 more commonplace. So do do be careful. Yeah. If like we all want to win, we all want to look good, we all want to be the you know the best we can be. But my God, just fucking be careful about it. I think people will have to understand that for for women, it tends to be a lot riskier due to a lot of the side effects are quite like masculine so like development of like deeper voice adam's apple that hair loss as well i know i know someone uh who i obviously won't name who had to have electrolysis to remove all the facial hair that it yeah. created yeah i mean even just things we look in the realm of like pcos for when women have like higher testosterone one of my my clients has uh, essentially she, she has a bit of a beard because she has pcos and therefore her testosterone levels are actually surely, really quite high surely we've all seen various uh females talking with much deeper voices as well that kind of scares me a you know, some people have naturally deep voices but also some people uh have dabbled with some toys i say toys anabolics uh to um <laughs> to uh, that may have contributed the to the deepening of that episode. voice. Look, I mean, at the end of the day, it's all speculation. It's all opinion. So, but like, well, I see anecdotal opinions, all that good stuff. But it's one of the things yeah. that we would always, I would say, I think we can all agree that we think for it, we probably say probably not worth it to be honest. But if you're going to do it anyway, get a good coach. Make sure you tick all the boxes. Get your blood work done, mm. and don't listen to forums. If someone ever tries to push you on more than let's say two fifty tests as a starting cycle maybe a bit more of some but around that ballpark it's probably something i'd be wary of yeah do you mean and I, I think some considerations are kind of going back to the point i made earlier about how this isn't like just 
just because you put supplements and vitamin stuff in your body, this isn't now just an extension of that. This is now a big step up from that. And yeah. if you are going to consider it, you have to consider everything you guys have discussed because I think it is a big deal. It isn't. You are signing pretty much a life commitment to this lifestyle choice at this point. So if you are going to go down that, consider that before you step over that line. Also, <laughs> acknowledge that just now your ceiling has been raised. I'd expect to put even more work in than you were before because yeah. you have to push that bit further to go that bit further because you are able to with that kind of elevated ceiling. It, it's like it's part of the process, not the solution. Yeah. Like it, it allows the process to be different for you, but you still have to go through that process. And understand that there could be some psychological slapping there. So when was the last time you had to deal with regression? You probably don't regress often. You're pretty consistent. You you always look fairly good. My Your only, strength is okay. My only regressions tend to be when I allow myself to get fat again, essentially. Yeah, but, or, but, sorry, gain fat yeah, again. But, but, that but imagine like a, that happening but, like that. Yeah, but, but your performance <laughs> is still, you're probably str- even stronger. So you're oh, yeah, really yeah. regressing in that sense. But when you go on enhancements, a lot of things that natural guys don't have to understand is that you have to experience regression quite consistently because you go on cycle, then you come off so and you, you do your cruise. Yeah. And then you, you could bolsterable man you train so hard do all that stuff but you're actually still in a lot of cases slowly regressing maintaining if you're lucky you know holding on by your fingernails and psychologically that must be an absolute slap to the face that you try so hard and you literally you don't succeed which is the interesting thing about it when you think about the people that are just really really want to do it and they're just obsessed with it it's like if they're not really that willing to put in the hard work to get it naturally imagine what it's going to be like for you holding on for dear life after your first cycle and everything's going bit backward for you and then you're going to be even more demotivated yeah. because you're now actually falling down instead of actually just inching forward and not being patient enough you only want it because it's next day delivery would you still want it if you had to wait, wait for three weeks for it sort of yeah thing? so consider it for a while if you still want to in a few years a lot of people i know have said from the age of 17 i'm going to do year one day and 10 years later they've taken that jump but in that 10 years they consistently had that idea of, yeah i'm going to do it for competitive reasons it's like fair enough for you. Ten years you've thought about this. It's not a rash decision. You've you've thought about this long and hard. Yeah. You haven't just said, ah, fuck it, Mike, Chris, I'm going to hop on gear tomorrow. It's not like you can just dabble in. Yeah, it's you can't not just yeah. dabble. Yeah, it's not like you just, I'm, yeah. you're, not, I'm not, you're not just having your first beer. You're, you're yeah. making a. I might learn to play golf. Decision. I'm going to play yeah. golf for a bit. It's like you, you can't, can't just become a level six uh, <laughs> yeah, steroid level user. six steroid <laughs> user overnight, guys. You got to do the courses. Yeah, that's you know, a you life gotta, sentence. <laughs> Um, look, I feel like I feel like we've done enough on this. Yeah. I feel like if people want to, we can certainly elaborate even further. But I would say this is almost like a this is a level one. Yeah, like probably this is your to. level one, guys. Level six. This is, is just yeah. very it's basic, insane. basic opinions and anecdotal evidence. We could go a lot further, but I suspect not many people probably care enough for us to go a lot further. Mm. Yeah, if and you do, we can. Yeah, and we could always try and find people who know a lot more than us. And there are, I do. do know some very talented people you can talk about. Uh, or if couple, you really yeah. want us to, um, yeah. So there you go. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> I like All right. That. Well done, everyone. Drugs. <laughs> Drugs are bad. Drugs. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, so I think that's about it. And uh, it's. I don't think we need to add any more kind of fun to this topic because it's not a fun topic. It's a serious topic. Next show, yes. next show. We haven't decided what it's about yet, but it'll be the usual, you know, good times. Give us some ideas. What would you like to hear about? Yes, guys? as as always, as always, if you do want to contribute to the Pump Fiction podcast, uh, if you do follow us at Pump Fiction Pod on Instagram, you will also find a link in the bio where you can submit your questions to us. You can submit your topics for us. And you can also submit any confessions of weird shit you've seen happen in the gym, like people grunting like bad guys from Men in Black. Like the guy who stalked me at my gym earlier. Oh, really? Uh, he wasn't really stalking. He was just he was waiting for me, a predator and a prey. I he just wanted prey. the machine you were on. Oh, no, he wanted to... He wanted you. He wanted to tickle, he, tickle he your tip. Me, he followed me around the gym to, talk, to, to get my attention to talk. Well, you know, you're a popular guy. I thought it was just quite funny because he's just staring at me like this. Um, but yes, so I feel like anyone else got anything more to add? No, that, that was very good. I think that was a responsible way to deal with the topic. Cool. All right. Well, uh, so if you're 15 to 18 years old, even think about it. Shut your mouth if you're even just, older than that. Shut up anyway. Just, just work Go hard. Go work just, harder, guys. Don't just, be lazy. Yes. Fall, fall in love with the process. <laughs> fall in love with the you know the art of what you can achieve yourself with the 
with the training with everything that surrounds it and then come back to us like I said yeah because you can have to do that anyway yeah. look at so, Josh Bridgman he, yeah. he loved competing as a natural loved it and said eventually he's going to go on gear and he did after doing, putting his time in naturally and he's done fucking well and he's doing really well for himself there you go. Laid the foundations. And don't forget. We're the three best friends that anybody could have. We're the three It's your favourite song, right? It's all a lie. We are the three best friends. Uh, this has been another Pump Fiction. I've been Chris D. Fellows, <laughs> at Chris D. Fellows on Instagram. He's been Harry underscore TFNL, and he's been uh, Radical.Mike. There we go. Boom, I never forget these things. <laughs> and this has been another uh, Pump Fiction. We'll be back again for episode 15. Thanks for listening, guys. Bye. We'll see you next time. Players.